Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. And on this week's episode, it's a short one. We're going to talk about five ways to get money off of your prep school tuition. Now, disclaimer, these are not guarantees. These are just things I have learned throughout my years of doing placement in the prep school world that I found out from coaches, admission directors, and families who've had experience with this. All right, so there's no guarantee, but these are just some tips that you can potentially take advantage of. All right, let's talk about number one, have good grades. The better grades you have, the more options you're going to have to get into more prep schools and more colleges. So if you've got good grades, good SAT, ACT scores, that's going to help get you at least a minimum of a look at some places. Now, I know SAT, ACT scores are no longer required. And my take on that is if you have bad grades or bad test scores and they're not that great, you just ignore them. But if you have good ones, you absolutely promote them. All right, and I suggest also taking both the SAT and ACT, you're going to test better in one or the other, and whichever one you have a higher score in, that's the one you want to really promote, okay? So have good grades and good standardized test scores. Number two, be from an area that's not represented in the prep school's current student body. With that being said, a lot of schools uh, in the prep school world, to include colleges, always brag about, hey, we've got kids from 25 different states. 20 different countries. If you're from a state or a country not represented at that school and you decide to go there, you're going to raise that number for them. And a lot of prep schools are in an arms race with good kids. And that's one thing they can tout over another place is, hey, this prep school only has kids from 20 states. We got kids from 30. They've only got kids from 20 countries. We've got kids from 30 countries. That means we're a more diverse student body. Okay, so they will throw money sometimes, not always, if you are from an area that's not represented at their school, okay? Some schools even have scholarships for kids from certain states. So you want to check with schools and find out about that, okay? Number three, be a good athlete. There are prep schools out there that have full rides for scholarship-level players, all right? They are sitting there waiting for them to, uh, to use them on kids that are really going to make their team better, bring a lot of coaches in the gym, So being a good athlete will give you merit money. Also, if you play two sports and you can do that at a prep school, sometimes you'll get money from a basketball team. Sometimes you'll get money from the other sport you're going to play. Just know if you're playing two sports, one is going to suffer because you're not going to be training as much in your main sport. Okay, so there's pros and cons to that. That's for another discussion. But they can use merit money from multiple teams to help you out. Okay, number four, qualify for financial aid. So when you apply to a prep school, you're going to fill out a financial aid form on a website. The website is called SSS, and it's a form you fill out on there. It's called, um, what is it, EFC, okay, Estimated Family Commitment, Estimated Financial Commitment. You'll fill that out. You'll fill out, um, if you're an American citizen, you'll upload your taxes, you'll fill out your assets, your current income, um, any reasons that you might not be able to pay the full tuition, such as an ailing parent, business doing bad, uh, other kids in private school or college, and that website's going to spit out a number that the prep schools are going to see. And it's going to say, hey, Johnny and his family can afford to pay $45,000, all right? Some families that might be a single parent or not make that much money, it might spit out a number saying, hey, the family only has to pay $3,000, all right? Schools have money in their financial aid budget to give to kids that they want that can't afford to go there, all right? Exeter, they look at uh, all their applicants and they pick the kids they want to join next year without even looking at their financial requirements because they've got a big enough endowment that they can fund everybody that they want to come there, right? Other schools don't do that. Other schools are a little bit tighter with their budgets and, you know, they need to balance out full pay kids with kids that they give a lot of aid to. So fill out the financial aid form. Some families qualify, some don't, but this can help you get money if there is aid still available. And finally, the last point is be an interesting kid, all right? Sometimes a kid might not be as good at basketball, but he's going to bring something to the school because he's interesting. Um, I had a kid in the past who was from Ivory Coast, spoke multiple languages, had great grades, 
wasn't the best basketball player, but he got a heck of a deal at a prep school for a post-grad year because of everything he was going to bring to the student body. I've got another girl who's going to be doing a post-grad year in the near future, and she speaks three languages. She also um, has a designation of being a very good piano player. I don't know what her certification is, but it deems her good at that. She also got a certification to be a physical trainer, and she's good at basketball, right? So you combine all, combine all of those things together, she made more money, uh, her family did, where she didn't need as much aid, but the school gave it to her because she was going to be bringing so much to the student body as more than just an athlete. I had another kid who I placed in a postgrad this year who had a black belt in martial arts, right? That's pretty interesting because that kid is not going to be phased in a close game because he's been choked out his whole life, right, in the dojo. So that's an interesting kid. And another one I'm going to end on is there's a kid that sold knives for five years door to door, and he used that money. His family made him use that money to pay for his prep school postgrad year. Those are interesting kids right there. Those are kids that schools want running around their campus. Um, they want those in their student body, and they want more than just athletes, and they will give merit to that. Not always. I just want to disclaim, this is not a guarantee. These are just tips you can use and ask coaches about or admission directors to see if there's any way they can help you out a little bit on tuition. All right. My name is Corey Heights. This is a Prep Athletics Podcast. If you like it, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube or all the major podcasting platforms. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. It's coreyheights at gmail.com. You can also text me. Both those numbers are on my website at prepathletics.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you all soon.